What's up guys, CJ here, aka The White Sheep, bringing you my Season 1 finale review, as well as my recap of the entire season, uh, and some of my predictions for Season 2. It's unfortunate Josh can't be with me, uh, I was having some real issues with my Skype recorder, and so I, I we, we couldn't, we, we tried to call and we got about you know 10 minutes into a, a recording and it just ended up falling apart and I went back to go check the, the setting and just, like, you couldn't hear me there were all kinds of technical issues so without further ado let me just jump into I have his thoughts I have his final score uh, so without further ado let me just jump into my recap of the finale uh, I feel like this was the best episode yet and it's funny because I say that every time I review S.H.I.E.L.D. but that just goes to show how much the show has been improving now I'm a Marvel fan so understand where I'm coming from. I actually, I've watched this, I've watched every episode this season, I've kept up with it, and I, I didn't hate on it as much as some people did. I understood there was a rough patch, but I feel like this this finale is primarily the most rewarding for people that have stuck with the show the whole way through. So if all of any of you, any of us really out there, give yourself a big pat on the back. Um, but like I said, I feel like this was the best episode yet, and I feel like it's because... This is exactly what Joss Whedon, Jed Whedon, Marissa Tankerone, uh, and Kevin Feige, this is what they were all thinking. This is what they all dreamed that S.H.I.E.L.D. would become when they were probably writing it out and planning it. Because this this pulled out all the stops, the action was bigger than any episode we've seen, uh, The there was so many resolutions, so much drama, so many feels really, and the jokes, while they were an issue for some people in the beginning, I feel like the jokes in this episode were well-timed, well-executed. I know that was an issue some people had early on was the prevalence of jokes. And Josh felt like if you didn't like the jokes early on in the show, you probably will have some issues with this episode. But to me, I don't think that should be an issue because I think the real issue wasn't the fact that there were jokes in the beginning, but more that they were ill-timed and in awkward places. And in this episode, they really showed that they've come a long way in understanding really just comedic timing. Uh, And every joke really was, you know really well set up and really well, I guess you could say established, because a lot of the jokes had to do with the Avengers and previous episodes. Uh, so let's start with some highlights for me this episode. The scenes and interaction between Fitzsimmons and the, I guess that's shipping container escape pod thing. That was brilliant, and that's really one of the only real, there are two real cliffhangers to me, or three really, uh, after this episode is, you know, Sky's parents, GH325, and of course, what happened to Fitz, and what's going on with Fitz. Uh, he's alive, but we don't know, you know, how alive is he? Uh, how functional is he? Is he going to be in a wheelchair? We don't know. We really have no idea. And that's so much drama. But we, we also saw, I guess, every, the the thing that I had been shipping for the entirety of the, of, like, the season was, of course, Fitzsimmons. Who who wouldn't? Well, I, there were some people that wanted to end up with Triplet, but I... I personally, I like Fitz a lot, so I hope he gets the gal. But um, anyways, I loved that. The May Ward fight scene, brilliant, absolutely fantastic, Uh, well choreographed, well done. And the joke in the middle of that actually was the best one of the entire show. It's like, reminds me of the old times, you were never on top. That was brilliant, and I died, I laughed out loud. Uh, (laughs) I, I, just so many jokes were great in this. Um... The final little joke, especially with Garrett and, you know, you know, cutting off one head and then he gets this, his full cyborg regalia in, you know, I guess reference to his character, his actual comic book character, only to be vaporized by Coulson. Uh, in honesty, there are probably too many highlights for this episode for me to go through one by one. Uh, and I'm just, I'm just realizing that now. There's just everything worked in this episode. The one thing I will say that might have taken some people out of the show is the presence of Koenig. At the end, uh, lots of theories there. I personally, I endorse Klonig or you know life model decoy Koenig, because part of me feels like cloning would be a, an ideal answer to that, but it might not be a good thing because once you open up that door, it's like oh, there's cloning in the Marvel universe. It's like well, why don't you clone Captain America or Thor or someone like that and just end up with an army of super soldiers? But anyways. So for season one, the finale, I gave it a 10 out of 10. Josh gave it a 9.5 out of 10 just because he felt like the jokes might have been too much. But I feel like it's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Jokes are well established. Uh, and particularly this episode had a very Whedon-y feel. Um, and I particularly loved the inclusion of Fury uh, and the way that he saved Fitzsimmons. Um, now, to recap the first season... As I had mentioned, I feel like this show has come a long way, and it's made me really proud to see it develop and really come into its own. 
particularly because of the way that it really – I feel like they listened to the fans. I know – I don't know their shooting schedule, but I know they were shooting up until pretty recently, like as much as a month ago, I think, they were still on set. And so that, to me, just goes to show that they, they might have been listening to the fans, and I, I like to think they were, and that's why they were able to fix so much. And it's unfortunate that the ratings kept dropping, um, only to sort of stabilize finally, and I, hopefully this – I think they kind of raised back up with this finale because hashtag Nick Fury was trending. It was the number one trend in the U.S. Uh, while this show was while this show was actually airing at eight o'clock, so that's a positive sign for the show. I like I like to think, uh, but really over this over the course of the season, the story has got to be just how, even though they struggled in the beginning, they finally hit their stride, and once they hit their stride, they made great progresses. And it's this is. It's kind of hard to, you know, rank a show like this just because its whole season has sort of been very up and down, largely up after the the rough beginning. But you know, it's definitely probably it's it's not going to be the best show on television as long as stuff like The Walking Dead and Game of Thrones are still airing. But to me, I mean, I'm not really sure there was a better network show. I mean, Hannibal, of course, takes number one. But as far as like on ABC, I I have trouble finding something that could really compete, and I think this is definitely winning the I guess the superhero TV market because I'm not a particularly big fan of Arrow, and I feel like this show has I mean I'm just I'm a I'm an unapologetic Marvel fanboy, so understand where I'm coming from when I say stuff like that. But all in all, I think I've got to give the season probably an 8.5 out of 10 because it had a lot of issues early on, and even though it recovered. Towards the end of the season, there were still there's still some stuff that they need to work on, um, but largely I feel like they ended much better. If if the if I mean I don't if they hadn't improved I don't think they would be getting a second season, which they are, and so that brings us to an actually important piece of news, uh, because Agent Carter is actually going to start airing on ABC's this fall as well. Agent Carter is going to take Shield's original eight o'clock time slot, and Agents of Shield is going to move back to nine o'clock, and that sort of is going to bring me to my season two predictions. Uh, here in a second, but I really love how there's going to be that duality, how there's the formation of S.H.I.E.L.D. with Peggy, and then there's the, the, sorry, the, the, I guess the reformation of S.H.I.E.L.D. with Coulson, uh, a little, little brain, brain block there, so that's going to be a really nice, I guess, comparison, you could say, a really nice side-by-side juxtaposition of the past and future of S.H.I.E.L.D., so now with that, let's move on into my season two predictions, uh, like I said, arguably the biggest cliffhangers are Sky's parents, who were hinted at in that final scene, uh, and GH325, and what the hell Coulson is drawing on that wall, really, with that knife. Uh, Josh and I are, seem to believe that it's a I, either a map of the universe or like a map of a star system. Some people think it could be the chemical compound of GH325, but who knows? Uh, really, I'm gonna bet it's something to do with the stars because I still think that the blue, the blue thing in the tank is a Cree, especially just considering some of the comments that uh, Chloe, Chloe Bennett, I, I was about to call her Chloe Wong, but Chloe Bennett uh, made earlier in the season about the Cree. It definitely seems like that could be that. But Sky's parents, it's seeming more and more to me that they might be in humans, especially because this brings me to a point where she, Reyna was interacting with her father. Um, Reyna, I believe now, is an Inhuman. Uh, she's got to be. Of course, with all that talk about evolutions, uh, Inhumans are definitely on the way. But the, the real tip-off for people should be her question to Garrett. What will I become? As in, what will I become when I'm exposed to the Terrigan Mist? Uh, what will I evolve into? And so that's, that's really key. We're definitely going to see a lot more of Reyna in the future, which is good. Because I, I feel like she was definitely one of the highlights of this season. A very compelling actress, and it, it pains me to see John Garrett go, but I feel like he kind of had to, because she and the Inhumans, and I guess GH325, and whatever the heck it ends up being, are much more important to this show than John Garrett was. So so I predict she's going to be revealed to be Inhuman, and I also think Sky's parents might be revealed to be Inhumans as well, uh, just because they talk about monsters. And her father did seem a little monstrous there. All we saw was his hand, but it was, you know, covered in blood. So we'll see what that leads to. Some people are saying it might have something to do with the Ten Rings, and that was my initial thought, because it does seem like he was in an Asian setting, uh, just because of the, the ruralness and sort of the, the small room. Some of the architecture looked a little little uh, East Asian, uh, something like that. Somewhere in Asia, I'm going to predict. And I don't know how much that's going to have to do with the Ten Rings. It would be interesting if it did, uh, but that was my first thought as well. As for Coulson, 
I don't think he's actually crazy, but it's clear. Garrett was mentioning it before. It's like you've seen the same things I have. Uh, and it, he had. He was drawing the same patterns and symbols. So we'll see. Whatever that may be. I think it might be, you know, a star map. Josh and I are very firm in that. But largely this episode uh, really wrapped up a lot of loose ends. Deathlock revealed to be, you know, a good guy. They finally have that whole cyborg vigilante thing going. Uh, and I like that they let him off doing his own thing rather than having him be just another agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now he's going to get to be a hero, as was, you know, foretold in the beginning. And really the scenes with him and his son Ace were probably the, the strongest ones in the, some of the strongest ones in the in the show. And I feel like J. August Richards himself has come a long way, uh, as has Brett Dalton. But largely season two, I feel like the, the show is sort of in control of its own destiny with the director Coulson thing and the rebuilding of S.H.I.E.L.D. That'll be an interesting change in tone, I think, and change in pace. Because uh, this, this first season had a lot of changes in tone and pace, especially, you know, capitalizing on the success of Captain America 2. Uh, and the whole change in the structure of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Hail Hydra and all that being revealed. Um, but largely, like I said, I think this show is in control of its own destiny. It's shaped up, it hit its stride, and now it's, more than anything, I think it's seeking not to be complacent and not to be just, you know, not not aiming for what you expect and more aiming for the undiscovered country, uh, what you don't expect. And I'm really pleased with that. And I think that means that the show has a bright future. And I'm confident in the writers and... Uh, and I'm confident in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a whole. And so, to me, I give the first season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, an 8.5. I give the season finale a 10 out of 10. Josh gives, us a, God, Josh gives it a 9.5. So, uh, tell us who you agree with more. I mean, like I said, I'm unapologetic. I love Marvel and I love this show. Uh, I'm, I'm also a fan of DC, but I feel like Marvel's winning it right now. So, anyways... I'm going to sign off here. Just comment below with your thoughts on the finale and make your predictions for Season 2. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.